So both of you are mothers of black sons. So what kind of conversations are taking place in your homes right now? Uh, well, I mean, it's a normal conversation, a conversation that's, of course, been going on since the beginning of time. And even from the days that we first got here, it's a conversation of being careful uh, that um, when you go out, you know, be kind. You think about in the 1800s, you know, don't, don't make eye contact. There's always a conversation. Every generation is different. Now, we, and we say, you know, be nice to the police. My brothers were told, uh, say yes, sir. But now it doesn't matter. Now it's just be careful, do what you can, you know, have all your ducks in a row. The conversation is very, my son is nine years old, so... I was hoping that this conversation wouldn't be around anymore. But every year I see that I have to have the conversation. And my son said to me, when I told him about what happened to George Floyd, he said, am I going to die one day? Oh, my gosh. It, it's a hard thing being a... Uh, yeah, know, it, uh, it, it really... No, 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 go ahead. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, but I just want to say this. What I want to say to people is... My son is like your son. Our children are all the same. We're mothers. They grow up to be men, but don't be afraid of my son. Don't be afraid of me. We are people, we are all people, and we are all just trying to raise our families and have good lives. Go it's ahead, Sherry, say what you got to say. It's a ridiculous thing, I think, though, that you have to say that. Kelly, it's really, it's just like Kim said, the piggyback. It's awful that we're still experiencing the same thing that people went through in the 50s and the 60s when they were marching. And mm -hmm. to have to tell our sons, we're black mothers, so our prayer is very different. To tell our sons how to survive just to make it home is, is very anguishing and it's devastating. And just like Kim, my son likes the WWE. He watches Nickelodeon. He's got a great sense of humor and he just wants a girlfriend. And that's just like anybody else's son. Mm -hmm. But to know that somebody won't get to the core of how beautiful he is because of his skin color is really frightening to me. And, you know, we just call for people to speak out against racism and speak out when you see something wrong. Speak out, you know, and also, you, you know, there's things in the rooms that you hear that Kim and I won't hear because we're two black women. And we just ask for people when you say, what can we do? Speak out and say, where are the people of color behind the scenes that can make a difference on even, you know, TV so that our sons can grow up and be, you know, and, and do what they love like everybody else's children. No, and it's the same thing, I think, with, like, even police brutality. It's like, hey, okay, there are great cops out there, but you're not great if you're just standing by. Like, you need to say something. Like, you have to call people out, and it's got to change. So, anyway, that's that's why I love – I know it's uh, the, it's not uncomfortable for me, but I know it can be uncomfortable for some people, especially in the spotlight. But I really appreciate you being very honest and vulnerable and truthful because I think that's the only way people are going to hear you, um, you know, whoever you are, wanting to get your message out. So, anyway, thank you for, for, for discussing that with me. I really appreciate it.